We are past the event horizon. The takeoff has started. Humanity is close to building super intelligence. New blog post by Sam Altman called The Gentle Singularity. And for the man who said we need to tone down the hypiness of the AI industry, he is sure doing his part to hype it up. But he has a lot of cool things to say. This blog post is really revealing about his vision of the future. Let's review it. Oh, hey. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Spotter. More on them later in the video. We are past the event horizon. The takeoff has started. Humanity is close to building super intelligence. And at least so far, it's much less weird than it seems like it should be. So what is he referring to by weird? Specifically, he says, Robots aren't walking the streets. Most of us aren't talking to AI all day. Surprise, surprise, I definitely am. People still die of disease and we can't go easily to space. And there's still a lot about the universe that we don't understand. So he's saying, even though we have passed the event horizon for reaching the singularity, the world is still the same as it was just a few years ago. And he also says much of the hard work to reach the singularity has already been accomplished. This is not something we're still working towards. Listen to this. The least likely part of the work is behind us. The scientific insights that got us to systems like GPT-4 and O3 were hard won, but will take us very far. And by the way, for those of you who don't know what the singularity means, let me just give you the definition. A hypothetical moment in time when artificial intelligence and other technologies have become so advanced that humanity undergoes a dramatic and irreversible change. Sam Altman then goes on to describe all of the benefits that we're currently Seeing and most likely will see in the future from artificial intelligence. The gains to quality of life from AI driving faster scientific progress and increased productivity will be enormous. The future can be vastly better than the present. Scientific progress is the biggest driver of all progress, and it's hugely exciting to think about how much more we could have. And on that note, self-improving artificial intelligence seems like the fastest route to unlocking this scientific discovery. In the last few weeks alone, we've covered papers by Sakana AI and Google that have shown artificial intelligence discovering new knowledge and applying it to itself to self-improve. Very, very impressive. Now here are some timeline predictions. 2025 has seen the arrival of agents that can do real cognitive work. That could not be more true. This is the year of agents. Agents are doing incredible work already. Specifically, writing computer code will never be the same. 2026 will likely see the arrival of systems that can figure out novel insights. And yes, I completely agree with that prediction of next year seeing AI being able to discover new knowledge. Now here is where I disagree. 2027 may see the arrival of robots that can do tasks in the real world. Now. Maybe I don't necessarily disagree because he kind of hedged the bet a little bit with the word arrival, but what we're definitely not going to see is widespread proliferation of robots in the real world. What I do imagine we'll see is a lot of factories starting to have them, starting to experiment with them, figuring out what they're good at, what they need to improve at, but walking down the street and seeing as many robots as humans, we're not there yet. Now, here is another prediction that I definitely agree with. I made a video just about a week ago talking about how AI is going to make everybody super powered. We're going to be so much more productive than we ever could have imagined. Generally speaking, the ability for one person to get much more done in 2030 than they could in 2020 will be a striking change and one many people will figure out how to benefit from. Yes, I agree. I know I'm very optimistic here. In the 2030s, intelligence and energy, ideas and the ability to make ideas happen are going to become wildly abundant. Now, I do agree intelligence is gonna become wildly abundant. I am hopeful that energy will be, although we're not, we being the United States, in a very good place right now. We definitely do not have enough energy to run these massive data centers as they continue to scale out. But putting these two things together, intelligence and energy, he argues we can have anything else, literally 
anything else if we just put intelligence and energy to work for us. These two have been the fundamental limiters on human progress for a long time. With abundant intelligence and energy and good governance, we can theoretically have anything else. Oh, hi again. Let me pause and tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Spotter Studio. If you've ever thought about making your own YouTube channel just like this, or you already have one and you wanna make it better, Spotter Studio has a bunch of AI powered features that make it super easy. You can think of Spotter Studio as an integrated brainstorm partner, project manager, and research assistant. And it is all about the data. Spotter Studio uses data-driven insights to identify under served or trending topics that specifically fit your audience. And it uses AI to help you craft different packaging options like the title, the thumbnail, and the description. It even uses a custom text to image model to create thumbnail prototypes to give you an idea of what they'll look like before you actually spend time creating them. And then you also get workflow management, video performance tracking, and so many other quality of life features that just make creating easy. Spotter Studio is currently running a limited time offer where you can get Spotter Studio for a full year for just $99. So check out Spotter Studio. I'll drop the links in the description below. Thanks again to Spotter. Now back to the video. And then he continues talking about how quickly we've gotten used to things, how quickly we've gotten used to having magical intelligence in the sky. So after some initial shock, most of us are pretty used to it. Very quickly, we go from being amazed that AI can generate a beautifully written paragraph to wondering when it can generate a beautifully written novel. From being amazed that it can make life-saving medical diagnoses to wondering when it could develop the cures. From being amazed it can create a small computer program to wondering when it can create an entire new company. And yes, to think where we were just two and a half years ago, compared to where we are today, it's stunning. But me personally, I'm kind of used to it at this point. And it does take a little reflection to realize how far we've come in just such a short period of time. This is how the singularity goes. Wonders become routine and then table stakes. And when we can use artificial intelligence to make new scientific discoveries, to discover new algorithms, to apply to itself, that is a recursive improvement and the rate of scientific progress will be stunning. And then he goes on to talk about where we are in the timeline of self-improving artificial intelligence. So he says, we have tools already built that will help us find further scientific insights and aid us in creating better AI systems. This isn't the same thing as an AI system completely autonomously updating its own code, but nevertheless, this is a larval version of recursive self-improvement. So we're at the very beginnings, and it seems like the intelligence explosion is right around the corner. He goes on to describe other self-reinforcing loops that have already begun, specifically regarding economic value from artificial intelligence. Because there is so much economic value in these models, the hyperscalers are investing so heavily and building out more infrastructure, the models get better, the model value gets better, and that flywheel continues. He also describes robots that can build other robots, and in some sense, data centers that can build other data centers isn't far away. Now he proposes, as data center production gets automated, the cost of intelligence will converge on the cost of electricity. The actual intelligence will go to zero, but that intelligence still requires GPUs to run, the GPUs still require electricity. And interestingly, he actually reveals some stats about the energy usage and water usage of ChatGPT. I mentioned previously, a lot of the younger generations are avoiding ChatGPT because they think it is so detrimental to the environment. Now let's put it into context. So an average query uses about 0.3 watt hours, which is about what an oven uses in a little over one second, or a high efficiency light bulb over a couple of minutes. It also uses 0.000085 gallons of water, roughly 1 15th of a teaspoon. So very little, but again, a single ChatGPT query is very little. And now imagine a billion of those per day. So it's all relative, 
but it's interesting that he gave these stats. Now he does say there will be very hard parts of this approach to singularity. Entire classes of jobs will go away. But on the other hand, the world will be getting so much richer so quickly that we'll be able to seriously entertain new policy ideas we never could before. He's likely referring to UBI, Universal Basic Income, which is the idea that all of this productivity, all of this value being created by artificial intelligence can be distributed to everybody on Earth for free. Imagine just getting a check every month because AI is doing all this work for us. Now, this is not a reflection of my opinion on UBI. I'm just reporting what he is likely talking about. But what happens when everybody's job is automated? What does he think will actually happen? Well, we'll figure out new things to do and new things to want and assimilate new tools quickly. Job change after the Industrial Revolution is a good example. Expectations will go up. Capabilities will go up equally quickly. We'll get better at stuff. And he specifically calls out subsistence farmers. So a thousand years ago, a farmer would look at what many of us do today and say we have fake jobs. Certainly my job, just talking to a camera all day. And think that we're just playing games to entertain ourselves since we have plenty of food and unimaginable luxuries. I hope we will look at the jobs a thousand years in the future and think they are very fake jobs. And I have no doubt they will feel incredibly important and satisfying to the people doing them. And now here is where he really gets into his future vision. Maybe we will go from solving high energy physics one year to beginning space colonization the next year, or from a major material science breakthrough one year to true high bandwidth brain computer interfaces the next year. Many people will choose to live their lives in much the same way, but at least some people will probably decide to plug in. What do you think? Are you gonna plug in? This sure sounds like the matrix, but personally, I love science fiction. I love thinking about this incredible future we can all have together. And yeah, maybe I would plug in. So here is his suggested path forward. One, we need to solve the alignment problem, definitely. We need to be able to robustly guarantee that we get AI systems to learn and act towards what we collectively really want over the long term. And he specifically calls out social media. Social media feeds are an example of misaligned AI. The algorithms that power those are incredibly good at getting you to keep scrolling and clearly understand your short-term preferences. But they do so by exploiting something in your brain that overrides your long-term preference. Very true. Social media algorithms are meant to keep you on the site as long as possible, and they exploit fear and anger to do so. Then focus on making super intelligence cheap, widely available, and not too concentrated with any person, company, or country. This, in my opinion, is likely the second hardest part to the alignment issue. I've thought a lot about this, and it seems when intelligence is essentially free, both in the digital world and the physical world, humans have a lot less leverage in society. If we're not able to take our economic value and use it as leverage in society, we have much less leverage. And thus, whoever has capital now will likely be in the best position to concentrate their power in the long run because whoever can pay the most for the intelligence will essentially be able to do anything. And so that concentration of power is a real concern of mine. Now, here's something funny and something I'm definitely guilty of. I was always decent at coding and then right around 2006, 2007, I really decided to get good at coding because I wanted to take the ideas that were in my head and make them into reality. I wanted to be able to iterate on my ideas, try different businesses and see what worked. And once I learned how to code, I can do anything. Then since learning to code, I've had many people come to me who weren't capable of coding, who were just idea guys. They would come to me and say, I have this great idea, build it for me and we'll split it 50-50. And every time I would look at them with an awkward look thinking, well, why don't you just learn to code and go build it? Or pay an engineer to do it. And so it was almost like a meme in Silicon Valley. And looking back at it, I'm a bit more reflective of how I was thinking about those idea guys. Now, let me show you what Sam Allman has to say. For a long time, technical people in the startup industry have made fun of the idea guys, people who had an idea and were looking for a team to build it. It now looks to me like they are about to have their day in the sun. So what he means by that is anybody with an idea can see their idea manifest. They can use AI agents to build whatever idea is in their head. 
That is a very exciting future to me and really puts those idea guys to the test to see if those ideas were valuable or not. I have this saying that I've been repeating to people so many times over the years, ideas are a dime a dozen. Ideas don't really matter. The starting point for whatever company you're building doesn't really matter as long as you're directionally correct in the problem that you're attempting to solve. Because after the idea is where the actual work starts, building the idea, testing the idea, going out to market, trying to sell it and iterating thousands and thousands of times. That is the real work. That is where the real value is, not the idea itself. Intelligence too cheap to meter is well within grasp. And that is at the same time, OpenAI is charging $200 a month to me for the pro subscription. But I understand what he means by that. They just dropped the price of O3 vanilla by 80%. And he signs off with, may we scale smoothly, exponentially, and uneventfully through super intelligence. And I'm back one more time. Thanks again to the sponsor of today's video, Spotter. Check them out, links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.